Jeffrey's always watching videos on self-improvement, but he never takes action. His dream is to become a rich, successful man, but how can he even get close to that if he doesn't have the discipline to build the skills that will actually make him money? Adonis. Adonis is a wealthy man. He lives in a big house with his wife Anastasia and their children. He can afford to give them the highest quality of life because Adonis worked hard. Building wealth was his aim, not his dream. And so Adonis leveled up the skills required to become rich. There was a point when I desperately wanted to make some money. I was 21 or 22 years old. I had graduated from university with a shitty degree, applying for jobs, hating my life. Started to look into entrepreneurship and business. And I heard this term like, yeah, go and uh, develop some valuable skills. Develop some valuable skills and you'll be able to increase your earnings. And a lot of people said that. They said, okay, go and you know develop some skills. But it was quite vague and they didn't really teach me in the right way the kind of skills that I should have developed to go and make some money. And so honestly, for the next like six months, I struggled. I didn't actually develop the skills that I should have and you know I just tried to like quickly go and make as much money as possible and that led to just kind of like a waste of time now of course you know I learned things through my first like six months of entrepreneurship when I didn't make any money but I wish I had a video like this to just tell me okay start with this because if you start with the right skills and then you want to go and try and make more money from your career or business you'll perform so much better than the guy who just isn't that educated to begin with developing your skills through education like watching this video or reading some books kind of gives you like a map to success. And so develop your skills, watch this video, read some books. You have a map to success. You know where to go and how to get there. And yet the guy who refuses to develop his skills, or he doesn't even know that this is a concept, you know, there's skills to develop. Well, he's trying to reach the point of success without a map. I really hope you can believe this. No one gets rich and successful and stays rich and successful without developing the right skills to begin with. The first skill and probably the most important that will make you rich is social skills. Your ability to communicate your thoughts and your ideas and to to collaborate with other people and to speak to people without coming across as weird. Now, in the modern day, because of social media and because we're all just spending time indoors, a lot of people don't really have great social skills. The issue with that, and you know, you might be thinking, well, you don't really need social skills. You can just work really hard anyway. The issue is that the fastest way to reach success is just to have someone else who kind of teaches you and maybe even gives you a bit of their success and guidance anyway. But if you've got poor social skills and you're not like nice to be around for other people, well, then you'll never get that like easy, path to success. And if you try and do everything yourself and you know, you're just behind the computer screen all day and you don't speak to anyone and you're trying to level up in a certain career or a business or something, it comes across in the way that you try and communicate like the value of your product or even yourself. And you know, the way that you write like a CV when you're applying for a job or the way that you try and network or if you network at all. And so someone who doesn't have great social skills will just not go about any people interaction in the right way that will actually get them the results that they want. Whereas if you start to develop your social skills through literally the best book possible, how to win friends and influence people. If you get this book, you can get it for free online or you can you know, buy it, whatever. And you master this one book. You know, there's, there's tons of books on social skills. Trust me when I say you don't even need them. You get this one book, how to win friends and influence people and literally read it every single day for a few minutes and then try and implement, you know, try and take action on what you've learned. If you master this one book, you could be successful just like that. I don't think there's any other skill that literally if you just had one skill, nothing else, just one skill you'd be successful with. Not only, and this is the best part with social skills, not only will it help you become rich and you'll collaborate with other people and actually give you the ability to communicate your value and the product that you want to sell. But the best part about it is that it'll give you the ability to actually make more friends. You always heard the phrase that, you know, it gets lonely at the top that, you know, as you level up, there's like less people to have friends with. The truth is that if you've got good social skills, that's not the case at all. That's the case for, you know, like that random, like 60 year old CEO who's working 24 hours a day or some shit and he's, you know, too busy focused on other things. But the new age of entrepreneurship of rich, successful young people, they're all actually very good with social skills, with communication. You see a bunch of these like richer guys, they're still being very social. Like they still go out to like parties and stuff. The reason for it is that if you're going to become successful and rich, you may as well do it whilst cultivating some friends that you like. This is a phrase that I use for my right hand man, my first ever employee, Sam. And I said to him like, I'm going to the top and I want you to come with me. Because when I think about going to the top, when I think about becoming the best leader of our generation, that's awesome. But the reason it's so great is because I have the social skills to actually become friends with you and to have people that I like by my side 
side because that's what makes life like worth living. So not only will social skills help you to make more money, but it'll actually help you to do so in the most fun way, which is with other people. What you really don't want, which is what a lot of people have experienced is that they go and build some wealth and they go and make some money. And you know, they hit, they hit their goal, they've made some money, but then they're lonely. Becoming successful, getting rich, making money is awesome. And it's like a huge benefit to your life. But if it's gonna make you lonely at the same time, it's like, you know, there was a positive to gaining money, but there's a huge negative to being lonely. It's like, it kind of evens each other out. The best life that you could possibly think of is when you become rich, become wealthy, get lots of money. But then you also do it when you have a vibrant social life of people around you that you fucking love. Because how awesome would it be to become successful, but at the same time, in all ways, get happier. And that's a little bit rare because a lot of people who go on to become successful, sacrifice their social skills, sacrifice like social events and end up just having like weird mannerisms. I created a full length guide. I think it's over an hour long to this book. So if you don't want to read it, and if you learn better from like video and audio, I'll have like a card pop up on screen and it'll be linked in the description free to watch it all on YouTube. And I literally went through every single section of this book. There's like 30 principles to social success. I went through every single one and gave you my advice. That's quite an old video that I made. And so I also have an updated video that I've made of social skills masterclass. And I'll have that linked and somewhere pop up. So you can just watch those two videos. They're like an hour long each. And you'll have a great understanding of how to improve your social skills. The second skill that will help you become rich is time management. This is something that you'll see, like the more and more you get successful, you will see that the top people, the successful wealthy people greatly, greatly value their time because your time and your attention is how you get shit done. And it's with time that you can become successful. And of course you might have heard like, wait, don't, don't trade time for money. This isn't about that. This is about valuing your time and managing it in a way so that you get the best out of your day. The average person who doesn't really have that much money don't manage their time at all. They wake up at whatever time they're forced to by either the school system or by their boss. They don't want to wake up at that time, but they need to. The rest of the time is managed by someone else, the boss or the teacher. And eventually when they do have some like free time, there's no management to it. There's no structure. There's no control. There's no routine. And so unfortunately for the average person who doesn't value their time, well, if you don't value your time, no one else will. And this is perhaps one of the single greatest reasons why the average person just does not make that much. Like they can't trade their hour for that much money. You know, you can trade your hour for what? Like $15, $25 or something. The average person doesn't get that much money for their time because it's just not that valuable. When you get into the skill of time management, and I'll give you a great tip for this, but when you get into this skill and you start to value your time and you start to structure your day, you drastically increase your productivity and your output and your effectiveness. And that will so significantly help you to become more successful. Now, there is a tip that I can give you to manage your time way better. And I learned this from Brian Tracy. He's my all time favorite author. He has this phrase, which I really like, where he said that one minute in planning is worth 10 minutes of execution. So what he's saying is that if you spend just a couple of minutes planning at the end of the night, what you're going to do tomorrow, you'll actually increase your productivity by about 10 times the amount of time that you've just spent. So for example, if I spend at the end of the night, five minutes just planning what I'm going to do tomorrow, I might actually be more productive to the quantity of about one hour, 50 minutes, something like that. Like, and it really does make sense. If you don't plan your time or manage your day, you'll probably get this feeling of like the day just seems to slip by. Like you didn't accomplish that much and the day is just over. And you're sure that you have more of a capacity to get more done, don't you? you you're sure that you could do way more. You just don't really end up achieving that much in a single day, do you? And the reason why is probably because you haven't planned your day. And so the way that I plan my day, which has really helped me, is very, very simple. Just on your phone or on a piece of paper, literally just write what you're gonna do tomorrow at what time. So 6 a.m. morning routine, 6.30, follow a call, 7 a.m. record six videos, 9 a.m. breakfast, 12 p.m. work. Do you know what I mean? Like have every hour of the day allocated to something. You know, do this the night before for like literally five minutes, just write whatever you're gonna do. Maybe you're at school, so you write like, oh, 8 a.m. school till 3 p.m., then 3 p.m. commute home, then 4 p.m. eat, then 4.30 learn, something like that. You write pretty much every half an hour or hour of the day. And of course, you know, some shit's gonna happen. You know, life will get in the way. Your mom asks you to do something. You're busy with something. One task took over the next. Of course, that's gonna happen. So when you do it on your phone, you can just take off, you know, if like the timing has messed up, just refresh it. So if, for example, right now it says 7 a.m. record six videos and I was supposed to have breakfast at 9 a.m. It's 11.45 right now. I've been recording for like four hours. So obviously I've missed breakfast today, but I'll just change it. So like, let's say this video is gonna end in 20 minutes. So 12 p.m. breakfast. So I've just updated it there. Now I'll update the rest of the day, which it seems a little bit tedious, but again, the one minute you spend just updating the day when you know something like life gets in the way, it's probably worth 10 minutes more, like 10 times more for your productive output. The third skill that's gonna make you rich is discipline. I spoke about discipline a lot, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Discipline is the skill of doing the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. It's specifically about your feelings. It's doing the right thing, the work, the hard piece of work, even though you don't feel like it. Because if you're a normal person and you only do that hard, important task when you feel like it, you're gonna get destroyed by the guy who just does the work even though he doesn't feel amazing right now. I've spoke about discipline a lot. There's a bunch of 
videos on my channel if you're interested. My entire channel is based on like the concept of being disciplined anyway, so you can go have a look at that if you're interested. And the fourth skill is stoicism. Now, stoicism and discipline are very similar, but I think stoicism is different in the focus of emotional, what, what would you say the word is? Emotional maturity or emotional control. Stoicism, we can say, is almost like a branch of discipline. And it's about staying stoic, like staying unwavered to whatever your emotions are like. Now, discipline was just, you know, okay, do the hard thing, even though you don't feel like it. But stoicism branches out to most of the day, especially with making decisions. If there was just one act that was going to make you the most money of your entire life, do you know what it would be? Try and guess right now. If there was just one thing, like one thing that you would somewhat consistently do that would give you the most amount of money, guess what it would be? Making the right decisions. Being good at decision making. The issue is that so many people, especially young men, are not good at making decisions because they don't make decisions through logic and analysis with this like masculine focus. They make decisions through emotions. So imagine you get emotional and then you decide to do something. You get emotional and you shout. You get emotional, you feel like craving, desire inside of your brain and you go and eat the junk food. That's all about your emotions and your emotions will wreak havoc on your life if you allow them to. The majority of people so desperately need stoicism. They desperately need emotional control, but it almost offends them to suggest something like this. Hopefully you're not like them. Hopefully you're thinking right now, yeah, being emotional is probably not a good thing. An issue with this, which I, I mentioned so often in my videos is that young men are being conditioned to be weak and you know, you're know you being told, yeah, it's good to be emotional. Young men should be emotional. They should show that if you want to become successful, masculine, if you want to make a lot of money, if you want to date or sleep with a lot of girls, being emotional is not going to help you at all. Be stoic. The fifth vital skill, which you might be confused by, is sales. Now you've probably heard this before. Okay, sales is like, you know, an awesome skill you should try. And it just seems like complicated and vague and confusing. Okay, how do you actually level up the skill of sales? Now, I like to think of sales as the process of convincing someone that the thing that you're selling them is worth getting. This could be, for example, a product that you're selling to like your audience or you use sales for that. But what's very interesting is that you use sales in your day in life because you yourself are almost like a product that you're trying to sell to this woman, not in like a weird way, but you're trying to convince her of the worth, the value of your product. And so if you're good at sales, like you'll see this trend if you start to look out for it, you will see the guys who are good at sales are always good with getting women. You always see like salesmen in a company are usually like womanizers, like they're usually playboys because if you're good at sales, you'll be good at getting women. And if you're good at getting women, you'll be good at getting sales. So sales is the skill of convincing someone that the thing that you're trying to sell to them, whether it's you, whether it's your business, whether it's a product, whether it's even your YouTube video, because you're almost selling like, you know, just someone clicking on your YouTube video. It's about convincing them that that thing is valuable and that they should exchange whatever they need to exchange for it. And you know what's interesting? I've seen a bunch of videos or comments about this, you know, like skills that young men should learn. And they say sales, they always say sales. And yet they never actually expand on it enough that like a beginner could learn it, which probably means that they don't even know what they're talking about. So anytime you see these videos, I'm like, oh, seven skills young men should need. Or you always see like those people who are like copy and pasting their comments. Like, oh, the 15 skills that men need and they just write sales and they don't expand after that. Usually they don't even know what they're talking about. I started as a salesman before this. I've transformed now more into a leader, but I was always starting as like a salesman and an entrepreneur. So I'm gonna teach you the most important part of sales, which is handling their objections. So let's say for example, I have a product like this water bottle and I wanna sell it to you and you're in the market to, you're looking for a water bottle. Of course, like, you know, you just go online to buy on Amazon, but like this would be the autistically detailed step of sales, right? I want to sell this to you. The skill of sales is me convincing you that this water bottle is what I'm asking for you to pay for it. Now, being good at sales is always focusing on their objections. So what I would do is I'll tell you about this water bottle, I'll tell you a little bit, and I'd ask you some really good questions like, oh, like, why do you need a water bottle? And you tell me like, oh, well, I like drinking water. And, and I don't just want to buy like a little shitty water bottle from like a store because they're plastic, they get crushed, they leak, they're, they're always warm. And then, okay, so I listen to what you've just said and I'm thinking, okay, that's the value that he's looking for. The issue, the pain point that he's got right now is that he buys these cheap water bottles. They always leak everywhere and that the water goes warm, you know, when you buy it in a plastic bottle. So I'll be, oh, see, see this, this uh, bottle, Super Sparrow. Well, the best thing about this is that it's made from this material, I don't know, fucking titanium or some shit. It's made by titanium, which means that it will keep your water ice cold for 12 hours straight. And you're thinking like, oh, wow, that's really good. Then I think about what you might object to this. I think about your possible objections because the thing is, you're not going to be, if I'm trying to sell to you, you're not going to be totally on my side, are you? You're going to be like, you know, there's a little bit of like a, a friction between our, our sort of relationship, isn't there? You kind of know I'm trying to sell you something. So you're not going to totally tell me what's 100% in your consciousness, are you? So you're going to, you're going to have some problems with this water bottle and you're probably not going to like totally tell me. So a skilled salesman would think about the person that you are and the things that you've mentioned and also like, you know, what the common objections are and bring them up. So let's say you seem like you're really into like fitness and you told me that, you know, the, the normal plastic water bottles aren't good for the gym because they always leak and everything. Well, then I might also say, oh, by the way, this bottle is BPA free, which means that it won't mess up your testosterone. Like, you know, all those plastic water bottles that you can get, they mess up your testosterone. So that might be a big objection that you had previously. And now you're like,
like, oh shit, okay, this water bottle's better. Another part of sales is knowing who you're selling to. So for example, if you were like a guy like me, I wouldn't spend time telling you like, oh, and this, this is better for the environment because it's not plastic and you know, we throw away too much plastic. Because the thing is, that might sound nice. But if I was personally in the market to buy a water bottle, I'm not sat there thinking, oh, climate change, oh, plastic, I'm not. I'm thinking, is it going to keep my water cold? And is it going to fuck up my testosterone? I'm a young man who goes to the gym. That's what I'm focused on. Being a good salesman is about thinking very deeply about this person's needs and objections and their desires and selling them on that. It's this whole process of convincing them. The sixth skill and a very interesting one that not a lot of people actually know about is meditation. Now, I've, I've spent so many videos talking about meditation, so I'm not going to you know, just explain the whole process again. I'll have like guides pop up and everything. But the reason why meditation will help you to make more money is because it drastically improves your focus. So, you know, in the modern day, people's focus is so fucked. They're always like, just scrolling on TikTok, like new content, new content, new content. Your mind just gets fucked in this modern day, doesn't it? Meditation is kind of like the cure for that. Meditation is a specific time where you're training your focus. With the modern world, with live chats, with TikTok, with Instagram, our focus is deteriorating. And with poor focus, well, you're not going to be able to focus on making money. You're focused on the work task. So you improve it through meditation. Alongside the benefits of increased focus, which meditation gives you, meditation and some other practices just improve your mental health. They make you feel better mentally. It's such a a widespread problem these days of young men who have poor mental health and honestly having bad mental health fully stops your ability to do many good things in life. Like if you've got bad mental health, it's so hard to be productive. Like if you feel a little bit depressed or anxious, it's so hard to like actually sit down and do the work. It's so easy. Think about it. If you've got depression or anxiety, if you don't feel mentally good, it's so easy, isn't it? To just spend all day on your phone. It's so much easier to fall victim to video games, to drugs, to junk food, to, you know, just wasting time. When you don't feel mentally good, it's so much easier. But when you feel mentally better, when you meditate and you journal and you actually feel happier, you go on to actually build more success. And there's real scientific proof of this. There's a book called The Happiness Advantage, which breaks down that happy people are literally more likely to become successful and happy people make more money. So to become happy, improve your mental health. And the best way to do that is to meditate and journal. I have a full like one hour, two hour guide to improving your mental health, which I'll pop up as like a card right now. The seventh skill that's going to make you rich is patience. And you probably don't even realize that patience is a skill, but it's the skill of understanding that results take time and to like stay in it for the long run. A huge problem of young guys who aren't very patient is that, you know, they'll try something and they won't see results in like two weeks, three weeks until they'll give up. The thing is that if you've got patience and you've got all of the other skills that we've mentioned, and you know, you, essentially patience is like sticking to it, even though you don't see any results just yet, you're very likely to achieve success if you have patience. But for the guys who are impatient, who, you know, have fucked up their patience because they use the instant gratification, you know, getting everything they want really quickly. If, if you're craving a burger, you can order a burger and it'll come to your house 20 minutes from now. If you want to have sex and you want to impress a girl, well, you can do that instantly by hopping onto a porn website. We've messed up our ability to be patient. And now it's like, we feel like we need results way faster than we actually deserve them. And so most guys just quit. They switch over businesses or different ideas and it just gets frustrating. You absolutely need patience. If you want to see some like good results in many different things, in your ability to improve and to attract women, in your ability to make money, in your ability to improve your physique, you must have patience. There's a way to understand patience, which I really like, which is, you know, those old school style trains, like the freight trains, like big, big, massive, like not like the new age speed trains, but imagine those like metal -y ones that you could probably imagine were in like 1900s or something. Big freight trains, right? Imagine how that train actually moves. The conductor's there, you know, he presses the button or some shit. I don't know how trains work, right? Think about it. This train is what? Thousands of tons. You know, it's huge and it's big bulky, right? And so, you know, he presses all like the coal. I don't know how the fuck, you know, essentially like the train moves pretty much nothing at all. Very, very slowly, very slowly, very slowly. You know, you hear like the big roaring of the it just way, 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 way slow, way slow, just slow, slow. Here is when most people would quit. They'd be like, oh, this train's going too slow. Like, I'll, I'll just walk. So the impatient man just walks instead because the train's barely moving. It's like just moving a tiny little bit because it's so heavy and it gets a little bit faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And have you ever seen like a video of like a freight train when it's at full speed? Well, bro, it's, it's going fast. It'll barge through like a concrete wall. This is exactly the same as results and success. It takes a long time to build up and most guys just give up because they don't see many results to begin with. But once you start to see results, results because you had patience. The success compounds and it actually becomes kind of hard to slow it down. You need that momentum and momentum comes when you allow yourself to be patient. I was going to stop here, but I'm live streaming right now and the boys who are watching, 
See, well, I'm live streaming as I record this video and the boys who are watching told me that this should be one more skill. So skill number eight is like a little bonus is humility. Humility is the skill of defying your ego. And your ego is like this thing inside of you, the Jeffrey part inside of you that tries to convince you that you're really great, that you don't really need to take something as seriously as you should do, that you don't really need to improve something as much as you should. So for example, the guy with the massive ego is the guy who's, you know, like a know-it-all. Like he, he, he might be a little bit advanced in, you know, some area, let's say like fitness, for example. There's a guy with a massive of ego who got into the gym and made some like okay gains but he never had the humility to keep learning and so once his gains slow down after two years but he's got this huge ego yeah I'm, I'm so hench yeah he doesn't make much progress after that but the guy with humility starts going to the gym and understands okay there's people out there who are so much more advanced than I am I'm gonna learn from them and so this guy with humility learns from other people makes awesome progress gets even more jacked than the first guy with the big ego and guess what the guy with humility keeps learning to be a black belt in martial arts is potentially the greatest sign of humility and there's like a, a story of like a man receiving his black belt which I really like essentially like I, I'm butchering the story but there's a guy who's been training really really hard and his sensei comes to him and says what does this black belt mean to you if you give me the right answer I'll give it to you and the guy's getting so excited he thinks like he's gonna get it and he's like yes it, it means the end of my training like I've worked so hard it's time to like celebrate the master looks disappointed and walks away the guy you know gets really annoyed at this he doesn't realize what he's done wrong so he just keeps training keeps training keeps getting you know he's training BJJ or something he's getting like choked up and everything months go by sensei comes back presents the black belt what does this black belt mean to you? And he gives the wrong answer again. He says, yeah, that, you know, I, I'm so advanced in this. I'm so good at this. I've been beating so many guys recently. This black belt symbolizes my excellence in the sport. Sensei looks disappointed again, walks off again. The guy, the student trains again for months, maybe years. Now he's so much more further than he originally was. Sensei comes up, what does this black belt mean to you? And the student says, it's the start of my training. Because from this point that I take this black belt and I wrap it around my waist, there is so much more to go and so much more to learn. And he gets given the black belt. It's humility, the skill of defying your ego and believing that there's so much more for you to learn that's gonna help you become rich. Click and watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.